Welcome back, one and all, to Companions of Xanth. I am the game hoarder. Let's continue on with this fabulous quest. Kilroy was here. Mountain closed. Fuck you, mountains closed. Mountains reopened. By the way, who's Kilroy? Let's return to Grandma's house. Okay, go inside the fucking door. This is it. The sign. Is this from the mountain top? It sure is. It's working. I can feel my skin tightening. Oh shit. Wanna fuck? You've saved me from this misery, young man. Take this evil potion away from me and dispose of it somewhere no one will ever find it. My pleasure. I could use another mission right now. I'm off to find Grolf. Maybe he's waited all these years for me. It's doubtful. I would have. Thank you, you dear boy. I must go now. Take care with the potion. Wait a minute. I got some potion. Alright. Guess who needs this potion? This ugly bitch here. You've done it! I'm beautiful again. Really? I can't see much difference. But Ogre Man will. Must find boy and go. Good luck. He said something about climbing trees. Not many trees here. Will be easy. You are good mundane. Farewell. Weren't you going to tell me how to get to the Gap Chasm? Chasm is southeast. Walk quickly. Avoid the beast. Thanks, Ogress. Good luck finding Junior. A large purple gem emerges from within the hilt of the sword and glows slightly. You and Nada follow the directions given to you by the Ogress and soon find yourself on an expansive flat plain, as promised as soon as the dim outline of the gap chasm ahead. Emboldened by its sight, ye both break into a run. You hear an increasingly loud buzzing sound approaching from the west. Then, suddenly, it flies to within feet of you. Holy shit, is that Bambi? Why do you approach the gap chasm, foolish, mundane, and naga princess? To get to the other side? I wasn't asking. Can you a riddle? It was a question. Why are you heading toward that most dreaded of crevices? I'm looking for a certain good magician. What certain magician? Your mom named Humphrey. Know him well. Well, at least you're headed in the right direction. Why do you seek Humphrey? Listen here, dear dick. I'm about to fucking smoke your ass and eat you. I haven't had veal in quite a while. I like to do all sorts of adventurous things that I can't even imagine. Sounds arduous. We deer flies don't go in for those kinds of pursuits. Why are you doing this? It's a very important game. Now flutter away before I blow you away with a 12-gauge shotgun that I have hidden in my pants here. A game? You'd attempt to cross the gap for a game? Jesus Christ, would you shut up? Yes, I would! And this is all for what? Your mom. It can't be that bad. Believe me, it's bad. A horrible dragon lives within the dread crevice. He'll kill you He'll for lick sure. My scrot. Not at all a pleasing prospect. I'm sure getting fried by a dragon isn't going to help you win your game. Dragons are pussies. I suppose you're right. I'm just doing what my companion says. Besides, this is an awfully weird game. Well, I can see that you're eager to move on. So, I'll leave you with one final word of...
of advice. Don't go into the chasm. There are three invisible bridges across it and a secret way around the area where it meets the sea. Thank you ever so much. You annoying bastard. The deer fly buzzes off, thank God. You hear a hissing coming from directly in front of you. Unseen, the creature manages to get within several feet of you. Oh great, it's a giant fucking snake. Oh, it talks. I want to die. Oh yes, I love dying. It wasn't a threat, so don't expect me to do it. I asked because the gap you approach has contained within it the most terrible of reptilian beasts. Oh no, not another beast! Avoid this creature at all costs. The bottom of the chasm ahead is littered with the bodies of foolish adventurers like yourself who paid the warnings no heed. I really want to cross that chasm. Fool, impetuous fool! Say, how are you talking? Do you have vocal cords? I'm not talking. Do you see my lips moving? Copperheads have a unique ability to communicate without speaking. That's funny. Never heard that before. Can you read minds as well? No. Then get the fuck out of my way. As you will, foolish boy. I'd like to see you talk that Naga princess into descending into the dread gap. I'm going to talk her into a lot more than that later. Now get the fuck out of my way. Then lie with the bones at the bottom of the gap, fool. Your mother was a ferret. Oh, Jesus. A powerful beast trots into the area, turns and faces you. It lowers its head as if it were preparing to charge. It kicks the ground with its massive hooves. Mom? Stop! We've got some things we need to discuss! Oh my god, it's a gay buffalo! I'm listening! You must speak to me about these important, important things. It's a stuttering gay buffalo! What all these important, important things? The weather, for example, has been very poor today. It, it, it must be approaching freezing and the humidity is decidedly in the uncomfortable range. You want to talk about weather, asshole? Oh, are you as interested in the weather as I am? Oh, yes, and the barometric pressure has been approaching unprecedented levels during the last few weeks. It's positively, absolutely uncanny. Is that all? Of course not. Have you noticed the field mice population oh around here God, is diminishing significantly as of late? I'm not even from around here. Now, enough of your bullshit. Oh, yeah. Uh, did you say you wanted to talk about my family? Oh, well, Edna has been taken slightly ill all this week. She's having a cud disorder of mammoth proportions. Edna? What about Harvey? I don't care about Edna. Fuck her. Let me go. And Benice thinks she's going to have triplets. Just think of that. I'm thinking, but nothing's happening. Have you thought about what you're going to be wearing this season? It, it, there's just so many decisions to make. I mean, were you thinking of uh, cotton coordinates or maybe more traditional clothing? It, it, it's cool out here, isn't it? I'm, have, have you been considering... The... I'm considering kicking you in your buffalo balls. You aren't by any chance a yak, are you? Uh, Why, well, yes, I am. I'm, how perceptive of you, mundane. But anyway, Uncle Fred says yeah. that the house has been totally, yeah. totally yeah. destroyed, and all his equipment has been ruined. I mean, it'll be quite a long time before he... Shut the fuck up! Very well, if that's the way you want it. It is! Goodbye. Oh, uh, by the way, what is the material your shirt is made of? It's made of yak skin, asshole. You pull out your sword and wave it around. <laughs> the yak trots away. <laughs> Fucking yak. You stand on the edge of the infamous gap chasm. Wind rips through the crevice. An intricate, slightly stairway natural leaves down in the misty dust below. Ten points. You walk to the chasm's edge and gaze down into it. With trepidation, you look for one of the bridges you are told about and are disappointed to find none. However, a steep natural stairway cut into the wall of the chasm appears to lead to the bottom. You reason that there's probably a similar stairway on the opposite side. 
Eager to press on toward, Humphrey, you motion for Nada to follow you. She folds her arm in front of her and stands still, slowly shaking her head. You sense that Nada is less than willing to accompany you to the Cosmo. I certainly hope you don't expect me to follow you down there. I do, Biznatch. The only thing dumber than hiking down into the Gap Chasm is to try and find a way around it. Let's fuck now in case we die. Not really, but there's no way I'm going to become dragon food for a game, even if this is the only route open to us. I'd rather spend some time looking for one of the bridges. I wouldn't. We'll never beat Kim to Humphrey's castle that way. Forget it, Doug. I'm not going down there. Yes, you are. Running out of choices, you consider braving the gap chasm alone. Just as you've made up your mind to do it, you hear the sound of approaching party singing with what me must be native folk song. As they round the bend, you immediately recognize Ginny, the bitch, Sammy, the hooker, and Kim, the cunt. Oh, and Cyrus, too. Kim is cuter than you had recalled. She turns to you, smiling, and offers you her hand. Hi, Doug. It's good to see you actually do believe in magic after all. What are you guys doing here? I was just trying to convince Nada to come into me with the chasm. Into the chasm? I'm not sure I'd be very keen on the idea myself. You know there's a fire-breathing dragon down there, don't you? I eat fire-breathing dragons for breakfast, Hooker. I don't know, but I wouldn't press my luck. What do you think, Jenny? It's a tough decision. I'll bet Sammy could be a Fuck Jenny! Here. She's six years old! What do you think, Sammy? What's the quickest way to Humphrey's castle? Sammy Cat runs over to the natural stairway and a dragon eats the little piece of shit. Sammy seems to think the stairway is the quickest way across the chasm. That doesn't mean it's the safest route, but it's almost certainly the fastest. At least the cat agrees with me. He likes to be referred to as Sammy or Sammy Cat. How about Sammy the Slut? He sure does. I think I'd pick that route for my mundane. I'm not sure I know of any other options available to us. I'm not sure I care. I don't know, Jenny. I really love Xanth and all, but I'd rather not take my chances with the dragon. He's got a pretty good batting average, I've read. Oh my god, nice close. Okay, listen up. I've got a solution that might suit everyone reasonably well. If Nod and I were to switch mundanes, we'd all be in the company of like-minded individuals. Doug and I will take this route. Nada, Kim, and Cyrus can explore other alternatives. What do you think? Uh, I don't know. Nada's been a pretty good companion. But there's no way she's going into the gap, Doug. You need Sammy and me to provide assistance in a dangerous environment. I'm confident we can reach Humphrey's castle and avoid the dragon. But this deal isn't going to happen without your approval. Wait, I gotta take a fucking six-year-old and her goddamn pussycat into a goddamn fire-breathing dragon chasm? Okay, I guess you're right. I'll do it. It doesn't matter to me at all which mundane I must accompany, as long as I'm not expected to enter the gap chasm. Then you and your two titties can stay here. I was getting a little sick of you anyway, so this is cool. This does seem to be a very opportune moment to rid myself of you. I won't assume responsibility for Kim, however, unless she herself wishes for this game adjustment to take place. That's okay. I read all about you, Nadanaga. I'll bet you'll be at least as good a companion as Jenny, but I still wish Doug would reconsider. It's very dangerous in the chasm, Doug. The Gap Dragon will flame you for sure. We'll see, bitch. Don't worry about me. It's what I do. Well, good luck then. If we meet up again, we'll have to exchange stories of our different adventures in Zam. Yeah, after we get done porking, that's cool. Having all now agreed, Nada joins Kim and Cyrus, while Ginny L stands at your side. Sammy Cat leaps down the natural stairway far ahead. You and Ginny take cautious steps as you start the steep descent to the Gap Cosm floor. You and Ginny both wind up losing your footing. Great! You slide down the gap walls for a long time, tumbling over end, and eventually skid to a stop at the bottom. When you and Jenny stand and brush yourselves off, you notice a dragon lurking in the distance. He has definitely spotted you. It wants to eat the fuck out of all three of you. You're stuck at the bottom of the gap chasm. A dragon is approaching from the north. Ooh, I'm so fucking scared. Now is probably a good time to save.
What is it, Doug? Um, I need you to be dragon food for a while. What do you think we should do now? There's not much we can do about Stanley's steamer, but that cloud is King Cumulo Fracto Nimbus, the biggest bag of hot air in all of Xan. Cumulo Fracto what? Nimbus. Cumulo Fracto Nimbus. He thinks he's king of all of Xan. He has a very unrealistic view of the world and doesn't hesitate to let you know all about it. How do you mean? He's stuck up, in love with himself, obsessed with everyone's opinion of him. One other thing, Doug. He has a vicious temper and can unleash a storm the likes of which you've never seen. He and Stanley Steamer have a long standing dispute over the control cleaner? of the gap chasm. Cool. Gives me ideas. I'm almost afraid to ask, so I won't. Good. You're too young to know. How dare you address the king of the air, beauty mundane? Your fucking mother. Like this, by the way. What? Not such a big cloud. How can you be king of Xanth? You look like a little puss. The storm leads towards you, assuming a position between you and the dragon. The dragon draws nearer. How dare you address the king of the air, beauty mundane? What? I'll bet you couldn't make it rain if your life depended on it. You fucking puss. The storm leads towards you, assuming the position between you and the dragon. How dare you? Yeah, yeah, shut the fuck up. What? You're so tiny you couldn't fill a thimble with rain, you puss. The storm leads towards you, and the dragon draws nearer. Oh, shit. How? What? You wouldn't know precipitation if it hits you in the head. The storm leads towards you. And we talk to him again! And we insult him again, you total wimp unable to perform basic cloud functions! Enraged by your taunts and insults, Fractal lets loose a snowstorm of unbelievable strength in the vicinity of the massive Gap Dragon. The dragon opens his mouth to flame you, but the only thing that issues forth is white smoke. Now you've got both the King of Air and the Gap Dragon very pissed off. Holy shit, Doug is the fucking king of cock. I'm gonna fuck him later. Oh, Nada. I hope Doug is okay down there. He is an impetuous child, Kim. I hope he breaks his leg. I hope you fall down How and can break you say your face, that? bitch. I kind of like him. Oh, you do, do you? Maybe you'd feel differently if you'd had to shepherd him halfway across Zam. But you were his companion. That doesn't mean I had to like him. You wanna fuck You're me. just mad because he left you for another companion. Yep. On the contrary, I couldn't be more relieved. Bitch is jealous. Excuse me, ladies. As interesting as you find the mundane boy to be, we still have to find our own way across the Gap Chasm. Ancient Mer legends tell of a hidden path that follows the edge of the chasm to the sea. If we can but find our way to the ocean, I will ferry you safely through the water around the edge of the gap. From seemingly nowhere, you hear the sound of flapping wings, and soon you find yourself being carried aloft by none other than Shea Chantal. You thank him profusely for his timely rescue, and Jenny points out Humphrey's castle on the horizon. Meanwhile, at the chasm's edge, it's these two dickheads! The mundanes draw near the prize, Demon Santh. Do not fear for your precious enchanted land. It is you who should be nervous, Demon Earth. I have every confidence that my mundane shall be victorious. Such foolish creatures, working so hard when neither of them knows what is at stake. But you must admire their ingenuity. They would make a good pair, these two, if they were not pitted against each other in this struggle. You are overly sentimental, Demon Sand. It is a flaw in both you and the land that bears your name. But you may rest assured that I shall cure the land of this problem when I win the wager. You underestimate the power of sentiment, Demon Earth. Some forces are stronger even than magic. Soon you will see that this is true.
You're outside the lower gate of an imposing castle. Chi sets the three of you softly down. Well, you've made it to Humphrey's castle, Doug. Now how are we going to get in? I'm going to use your head as a battering ram. You tell me. Hey, I'll bet Sammy can help. Have the pussy crawl through the gate. Sammy, what is the most direct path through this gate? Using your head as a battering ram. That's a big fucking cat. My god, we'll be here all week. cat just took a shit and buried it. What the fuck is that going to do? It doesn't help me. The outer wall of the castle are made of thick impenetrable stone and capped with treacherous metal and true deterrence. Loose brick. Press that. And flip the switch. It goes green. The gate opens like a fucking glove. Find another way to lower that drawbridge. Let's draw the drawbridge. Draw. Draw. Draw the bridge. Draw. Draw. On the path. You draw a section of the bridge over the moat. This is working out quite nicely. You draw another section of the bridge of the moat. Your work here is complete. Not welcome, says the floor mat. You're standing before a solid closed oak door with this tiny closed door set in it. Open that shit. I'm coming, I'm coming. From the opposite side. Yeah, what is it? Uh, are you the good magician, Humphrey? Who's asking? Uh, we are. I mean, I am. Doug Mundane, sir, at your disposal. We don't want any. I'm not selling anything, you fucking fag. I'm gonna poke you in the eye with a crowbar or a magical sword. Mr. I. What is it this time? Are you Humphrey? No. And we're really not interested. Listen, we've traveled a long way and endured terrible trials to get here. I think we're entitled to see the magician of the house. You can only see Humphrey if you get entry to this castle. And, as you can see, this door not a way in. Any questions? Why are you being so difficult? Why are you? Can we get inside? Listen to me carefully and mark my words. For one, two, gain final entrance to this castle, you must only listen to me. Okay, I'm listening. That is all. That wasn't much help. And you are a piece of ass. Alright, it doesn't look like we're gonna get in this way. So we'll head back to the courtyard. Oh shit. You're standing on the other side of a moat from a corner tower of Humphrey's Catchel. It looks like some fucked up serpent in the water. Let's talk to it. You know it talks. Hi, Therpent. You're bravely a third. The Therpent blinks. What is it, Doug? Uh, what do you make of this giant dragon? I'm not certain, but he seems to be daydreaming. Uh, 
Uh, is there any way you could use your talent here? Let me see. I'll try singing my song here and try to gain some further insight. Let me know if you find anything else, you little skank. I assure you, you'll be the first to know if anything comes of this. That's good. Jenny starts to sing her song. Jenny finishes her song. Thank God. Okay, I think I may have found out some useful stuff. That's great. Please do tell. I sense the dragon's dilemma. He's serving his year of service to Humphrey for getting the answer to his question. His problem is this noisy cricket. The bug makes such a racket that he's unable to get any sleep. That's all? No. He's called the lockpick monster in his homeland. I also sensed a nightmare concerning a large fish tank. Okay. How do you know he's a he? I don't know. He just felt like a he. This giant serpent cock a large fish tank, huh? Yes, he was in it, and it was breaking. Uh, what was his question? I have no idea. It's probably very personal, though. That tiny bug should be no problem. It's nice of you to want to help the poor dragon, but I'm not really sure how that will help us. I've noticed that this game has a way of rewarding good deeds. Very astute, Doug. Goddamn right. You slam the jaw down on the troublesome bug. The serpent yawns and stretches, rearranging his coils down the entire length of his body. He appears to slip off into a deep sleep. So, move across. Jenny, Sammy, and you step gracefully across the moat on pig's humps. You're standing beside one of the castle's walls, looking down on a closed sewer cover. Interesting, it looks like a guitar pick. You insert the crowbar into the grate and bear down hard, finally prying it loose. Feeling victorious, you toss it into the moat. So much for the crowbar. Oh, some creature slithering away. You squeeze under the grate cover in the darkness below. You're in a dimly lit sewer. It stinks like shit in here. You see a small panel fall down the sewer wall. A strange creature eyes you and slithers from view. Meanwhile, when Cyrus, Nada, and Kim arrive at the shore of the ocean, they met a beautiful merwoman named Mercy. She and Cyrus ferried the adventures across the water and skirted the edge of the gap. The two more people fell instantly in love. Oh, Cyrus, I know our love is no fluke. Oh, shit! Yes, Mercy. From the moment I saw you, I was hooked. The scales fell from my eyes. I fell in over my head. Sigh. Yes, Mur. Let's swim away together. Good idea. Let's hightail it out of here. Yeah, get the fuck out of here. It's a gay sunset. Alright. We're in the sewers here. Some kind of green eyes staring at us and there's a platform and some switches looks 
split the first two down and the fourth one down. You flip down the full switch and the platform you're standing on starts to vibrate. The platform rumbles upward. You and Jenny are forced to crouch on it because of the intense vibration. Jenny kind of likes it. The elevator comes to a stop within a small library or study. You hear the rustle of approaching feet from the hallway and none other than the good magician Humphrey steps into the room. Hi, Humphrey. Humphrey sits on the bench before you, his narrow desk and eyes your party with keen interest. He yawns deeply, scratches an itch on the top of his balls, and resumes his study after you. After an extended period of silence, he begins his interrogation. And what may I do for you, Doug Mundane? Hey, how did you know my name? I know your name and much else concerning you, Doug, for I am a powerful magician, currently the most powerful in all of Zan. What else do you know concerning me? I know of all your travels in Zan. I was aware of your trials in Isthmus Village, the dangers you encountered in the Five Regions, your defeat of Computer and the Gap Dragon. I've even known the exact time of your arrival here for some time. Wow, I'm impressed. Can I ask you a few more questions, Four Eyes? I usually charge one year's service from anyone asking me a question. In your case, however, I will waive this fee, given the special circumstances. Ask away. Well, I'm a game hoarder, and I'm fucking awesome, so I can ask all I want. What do you know about this game I'm playing? First of all, it is no ordinary game. This game was constructed by two demons, powerful beings with little care for you and I. The purpose of this game is to settle an important dispute between them, one that will affect all things living and inanimate within Zen. That's interesting. What kind of effect? The stakes in this game are the existence of magic itself. If the demon named Earth wins, magic will perish from Xanth forever. If, however, the demon named Xanth should win, then magic will be preserved and Xanth, as you know it, will survive. Well, how do I fit in? I don't know anything about demons. You represent the interests of the demon Xanth. Should you fail in this game, magic will be lost to us forever. Doesn't that mean Kim is a bitch? I mean, playing for Earth? Yes, although she does not know it. Earth has broken some rules of this game without the knowledge of Xanth. He has forced Nara Naga to serve his will in winning the game prize. So basically the entire future of Xanth is in my hands. Precisely, Doug. You must claim the prize before Kim, or all of Xanth will be doomed, devoid of everything magical and good. What a drag. I'm not really sure I'm up to this. I think I'm going to go take a nap. Yes, you are, Doug. You have become a different person while you've been here. You have grown. You have learned to love that which you knew nothing about. You have grown stronger and wiser, learning from the land. I guess you're right, but there's more I need to know. Ask away, but ask quickly, for the existence of magic is at stake. What can you tell me about this sword that's so badass? The sword is an artifact of the ancient inhabitants of Zen. It is one of three such swords known to exist in Zen. This one's name is the Sword of Wisdom, for it conveys some measure of wisdom on its bearer once it has grown accustomed to them. How many jewels glow upon your sword, Doug? Five. That's odd. The Sword of Wisdom supposedly has six stones. Perhaps you've not yet performed some important task required by the sword in order for it to convey wisdom upon you. Once activated with the six gems, the sword has a great power to repel and destroy evil. Blah, blah. I guess that makes some kind of sense. What else do you wish to know? Have you got any ideas about what I should do now? You must find and claim the prize before Kim. Duh. What do you think the prize is? It's not important, young man. What is important is that you reach it before Kim. She nears it as we speak. I fucking knocked that bitch out. I know it to be in the gourd, hidden from general view. The gourd? What's that? The gourd is a place not of this world. It lies beyond the boundaries of waking thought, through a door that only few may pass. Journeying into the gourd should not be undertaken lightly, for hazards and nightmares beyond imagination lie there. 
This is why Xanth and Earth have placed the prize there. Only the most daring and most skillful adventurer may hope to survive it. This is your hour, Doug. You must enter the gourd and preserve the magic of Xanth. How far ahead of Kim am I right now? This is the bad news, I'm afraid. Kim arrived here several hours ago and, under the rules of the game, I was obliged to tell her everything I'm telling you. I was, however, forbidden to tell her whose side she is representing in the game. She has already entered the gourd with her companion and is now drawing near the prize. I shall have to kill her. How do I get to the gourd? One may only pass into the realm of the gourd by looking into the peephole of a hypnogourd, a common vegetable in Zan. Once a viewer looks into the peephole, their body becomes transfixed. Only their soul passes into that dark I'm not world. looking into anyone's peephole. Not a problem, Doug. While Kim and Nada have their own, I am pleased to aid you in the only way I can. Take these hypnogourds and good luck finding the prize. Humphrey hands each of you a hypnogourd and gestures to the small room to the southeast. You walk into the room and find Nada and Kim seated on one side of the table, staring blankly into gourds similar to your own. You and Jenny take your places into the two empty chairs. You carefully turn the gourd over in your hand and look into its peephole. A path leads from your position northeast toward the imposing mansion. So, now the mundane boy knows he fights for you, Demon Sand. That meddlesome Humphrey has interfered with the game. It doesn't matter that Doug knows Demon Earth. True, he may work a little harder to capture the prize, but unless Kim discovers she represents you and the elimination of magic, it is still a fair contest. You are a fool to pin your hopes on a boy who didn't even care about Xanth when the game started. Perhaps. But in the course of Doug's adventure, the land has brought out qualities in him that he didn't know he had. Doug has learned a lot, and he has Xanth to thank for it. He now realizes Xanth is a special place that is worth preserving. Well, the battle isn't over yet, Demon Xanth. My girl is still ahead of him, and that Naga princess isn't above trying a trick or two to make sure that Kim gets to the prize first. Alright folks, that wraps up for this video. We'll see you next time with more companions of Zanth.